Every year, the draft presents at least one quarterback with a wealth of history, uh, and within that history, a lot of winning and a lot of efficiency, but major questions about how and if it would translate to the next level. I think the poster child this year is Jalen Hurts. Yeah, no doubt about it. A lot of questions. There's potential. We see that. We have questions, at least I do, about what I've seen on film. You know, I also question people who are going, oh, now he's a second-round quarterback, mm -hmm. where I want to go, whoa, okay, I don't know yet. I haven't deep-dived all the way into all this film yet, but I've seen enough to go I'm not sure yet there's potential hey the Taysom Hill that little niche is certainly going to catch on fire in the NFL at the very least Jalen Hurts could maybe be one of those guys for a few years before he develops but let's not forget he had problems throwing the football right, right. I mean he got benched in a national championship game because they couldn't throw it and hence the major question and right social media will not be making the call on when he gets drafted or anything like that but you can dip your toe in and see it. This ranges a couple of years from Oklahoma back to Alabama, questioning if he would be better at running back or sure. quarterback in the NFL. Right. I, and, and listen, I get those questions. I think he silenced some of those critics by what we saw at Oklahoma this year and what I just saw at the Combine. I think there are some things there to build on. You know, and at the very least, he's a project where the guy that might have some potential later on. And in that meantime, you might be able to use him on the field in some certain situations, H back, slot receiver, whatever it may be so he can get used to the NFL but yes the throwing was an issue now the one thing I get all the way is oh that he must have fixed himself at Oklahoma <laughs> no, no he got better at Oklahoma there's no doubt is he a more accurate thrower is he better at seeing defenses yes all of those was he a little more consistent certainly I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm blown away by what I saw at Oklahoma yet I think I think there are questions there too and people go well how come he had all the success at Oklahoma not Alabama well here here's the first thing is this SEC defenses are in a different world than the Big 12. We're here we are. We're getting in the draft mode once again. Mm -hmm. We're not hearing about any Big 12 major first round top 20 picks. I can tell you like every other defensive guy we talk about is from the SEC. Right. So it's a different world. It's most NFL like the Big 12's wide open. It lends itself to easy completions. Oklahoma is clearly the most talented team in the Big 12. So they're always being able to play on that pedestal and they play in wide open style of football as is to begin with. And all those things help Jalen Hurts. There's no doubt about it, but I'm not ready to sit here and go, oh, he's a first rounder now because right. he was a runner up in the Heisman and, and they were in the final four in the semi college semifinal. Seems like every year. Right. Well, he has said he's a quarterback first and quarterback only. Good. So let's let's evaluate him that way. Let's yeah. go to the combine and start just like we did with Justin Herbert a week ago. Let's sure. begin with the very basics, his grip and how he's holding the ball. Interesting here thing here. First off, grip grips the ball in college like Justin Herbert. Two and five. Here we go. Ring finger on the two slot. Three, four, five, and and then it's under five. Okay, so mm -hmm. here you go. And this is this is the way the big guy gripped the ball in college. All right, right here. Now this is what's awesome. I love this. Get to the combine. I noticed this like the first few throws. I went, what? Doesn't look like it's two and five. Pinky's lower. Pinky is lower. Something about the NFL ball that he didn't like or didn't like or whatever, but he felt like he wanted to grab more of the ball. He's moved that pinky finger under six now. So it was a two under five. Now he has spread his hand out a little bit more at two and six. Why? I don't know. Hey, mm -hmm. again, you know, I know I tinkered with it every now and then just because I felt like, ooh, this feels well, good right now. That's what I was going to ask. I, right. I, I never changed my grip a bit, never tried to. Right. Is, is it something that's a good idea? Well, it is. You can certainly get used to it in a hurry. I mean, this is something that could be become second nature to him by the time OTAs come around. If you're if you're throwing 150, 200 balls a day or, you know, every other day, which he should be at this point right now, this can become I don't even have to think about okay. it. I know my father has changed his grip before in the middle of an NFL season. Wow. And he has told me I had to think about it, you know, dropping back that first game. But after that, I got used to it. I would think more than anything, he probably just feels like he's got more control by moving it down. He's grabbing more of the football. His hand is widening out that way. And now he's got his hand more on that fat part of the football to maybe where he feels that the control, the accuracy, the consistency is better, but very interesting to watch nonetheless, okay? All right, next thing. 
We're going to talk about the motion. Is that where we're going here next? I believe that would make sense. That yeah, makes sense. The grip hey, to the motion. Grip right. to the motion. Here we go. Okay. So there's things to like and things not to like about the motion. All right. Now, the first thing is the, the one thing I don't love, and I see this a lot in Jalen Hurts throwing, is his arm will act as an independent contractor. And as you and I know, mm. okay, and I know you're going, what the hell do you mean right now? Okay. But you know I'm into using your body to throw. Right. You got to have mechanics. You're not going to be on your A plus game game every day you go out there so that's when mechanics come in to play and what you're saying is that he's too much all arm too much all arm it's it's too much of and just to show it and again everybody out there I'm lefty I'm not righty so you got to flip it around for the uh, the rest of the normal world all right I'm screwed up only not not only with my arm but in the head all right but what he does a lot of the times is there's no movement you know how I'm big on movement up top you look at any great thrower Mahomes Brady Rogers whatever it may be they this sways right it mm -hmm. allows the arm to act as a catapult it's in a reactionary thing instead of the arm being the focal point and just going oh arm you throw the ball okay yeah that might work a little bit but I promise you you're gonna throw some Aaron passes that way I, I think the best example yeah just going back to my fandom watching quarterbacks sure we always heard about what a great arm John Elway had sure a wonderful arm throw right. the ball 80 yards throw it 90 yards first time I saw him in person and it's hard to see this on TV but his turn with his upper body and right here was so violent when he threw the ball I was like oh my gosh that's all I saw like the first 10 times I saw him throw it's in person all time. was that kind of turn that he had right there so that that's what comes to my mind when you talk about it can't be just arm you got to have some of this in there as well. without a doubt he's the poster child that's a great person to bring up anybody out there watching this right now when we get done with this video go Google pictures of John Elway you're gonna see him like this right. like all the time almost to where his name on the back of his jersey is facing the target because to what you're saying then it allows him to come out of it Explode. and really throw with power yeah. and you can let the arm be reactionary instead of the main thing and then it'll slot in the right place mm -hmm. with Jalen Hurts too much I see this get to the target I see none of this at all and then I see a drop of the ball and the arm really just do everything by itself so it's from here he never gets any of this and then as you see in this picture it just kind of stays frozen and in this one he's got a slight bit of shoulder turn here but let's go to the next picture Pete the next picture you see it that was the ultimate that was as much as he got closed so there he was closed and he got to about right here and then it's fly wide open and that's when it becomes an all arm throw yeah and that would be a little issue to me and the second thing I would say about this picture you know that I'm big on arm angle yeah. okay I don't like this arm angle that we see right here all right I don't like it that's to me it, you know and this is something that I saw evidence and we'll hit this in a minute in the combine that he could clean this up which goes Goes, ooh, there's potential here, okay? But again, with the dropping of the ball, at times, it breaks that angle, mm -hmm. all right? And now he gets in this motion. You're not going to see any pictures of Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers like this. Where would they be at that, at they, that spot? At this point right here, they would be more like here, mm -hmm. okay? It'd be a little more here, right? Instead of like this, that is very hard. And again, now, are you going to slot it up the right way every time when you're using that just arm independent contractor? I would would say no you're gonna have some days where you're gonna say, hey you're a great athlete you got mm -hmm. talent hey it's gonna come out and you're gonna go man I got it I'm on fire but then the next day you could go out there when you throw the ball like this and go whoa I've missed a slant I've missed a five-yard completion what the hell happened and to the point here this is the game against LSU in the semifinal hey anybody go back and watch early in this game he misses a ton of easy throws right. he misses a ton of wide open receivers so these are things he needs to clean up if he wants to become an NFL legit starting quarterback. And I do think that there's there's things to work with here and some talent to work and with. And what I see there when you talk about his body flying open, right? again, going back to a golf analogy because we, we, we've all hit bad shots in golf, but if you're playing with someone who really knows what they're doing, off the tee, let's say, well, you blocked it. Oh, what do you mean I blocked it? It means your body got way out in front of the club sure it looks like his body and we talked about how important that is to pull that open with some power is way out in front of, of, of his arm definitely I think that's very real and then what's going to happen from that is first off it's going to compromise your power you're not going to have the same amount of power as you would from right here as you would to just be like right here no mm -hmm. it's that's not going to work and then it's going to just lead to different release points to where the ball could spray anywhere and more times than not it's just going to lead to weak throws that die out 
out to the target or maybe they fade a little high because when you get like this, you have no, you can't, it's hard to get over the ball or do any of that. So you're kind of stuck underneath it. So this is not an ideal throwing motion. Again, you want to keep that arm angle. You'd want to keep that front shoulder in there a little bit more like you talked about with John Elway. Right. And, and listen, I'm not, you can drop the ball. I don't care about that. But mm -hmm. when you drop the ball and the angle of the arm breaks, right. that's when you get into Tim Tebow land, and that's when you get into inconsistencies. Right. You know, you can drop it. There's a lot of quarterbacks that drop it, but this never leaves, and that allows their arm to really be a catapult at the top mm -hmm. and get real power, spin the ball, and have consistent accuracy. One of the things Tom Brady talks about, and we've talked about his motion changing for the better throughout the last 10, 15 years. That's right. I know one of his swing thoughts, uh, so to speak, is stay behind the ball. Sure. Stay behind the ball. Sure. Because then you have power behind it. Yes. Everything about him is in front of the ball right now. No doubt about it. It's all his whole, like you said, yes, his whole body's in front. The shoulder's already out. Now the arm's just going to go straight right. down, right? And we, I saw some of these throws at the combine. Now, I saw some other throws that were done the right way to make me believe, okay, there's something to work here. But the behind the ball thing, yeah. very real thought. I mean, that's what Rodgers and Brady do really good. Right. You know, they, the, they're back here on that back foot, and it just allows them to be oh, and launch the ball, okay? But as you see with this picture, it is wide open. Mm -hmm. The arm is an independent contractor, and it leads to some underwhelming throws that you see from Jalen Hurts from time to time. So, right. uh, so fast forward then yeah. from here right. to the combine. Yep. It sounds like you, you, you liked some of it. You didn't like some other parts of it. Yeah. Well, here, okay, so just, just here, again, now, and we'll break it down, but this is the, the throw for how, have velocity, just the velocity, how, the how hard ball. can you throw yeah. the ball, right? right? Now, one, okay, the one thing I consistently see from Jalen Hurts is he has a hard time stepping on the pedal and releasing the fastball mm -hmm. because he doesn't get his body in the right positions, right. and I think sometimes a lot of young quarterbacks make this mistake. They think, oh, I want to throw it harder. I'm going to make my arm longer. Mm. No, it's, it's almost the exact opposite. You're not... You're you're not helping yourself out. It's like going to the golf. You want to go back to golf. Just because you reach back farther to hit a 350 yeah. doesn't mean it's necessarily going to go farther. It's about efficiency and the power you can create there. So with this, again, I saw some of the old habits here that I didn't love, okay? So let's, let's play this out. You see here, he's in a pretty good position. The shoulder, again, I would like to see him like this. You're gearing up to throw the ball as hard as I can. I'd love to throw this ball at this camera as hard as I can right now <laughs> for you to really feel the power of it. I might have not been a good quarterback, but I could throw it, <laughs> all right? Now, so there we go. Let's go to the next picture, Pete. You go to the next picture. You know, again, I don't love this either. You know, here he is, throw, the, the shoulder, not horrible, Okay, it's not horrible, but the weight is a little forward. His as lower you talk body about. Just looks like he's pay, uh, playing a, a nice, easy game of catch. But that's what I mean. And you're yeah. going to see that a lot. That's one of the thing that came up to me. When receivers are wide open, which they are a lot in the Big 12 and in Oklahoma, hey, you could throw it and real easy and be controlled, and C.D. Lamb was still going to catch it and make right. somebody miss and get 20-yard completions. As you know, the game changes in the NFL. You know, you're open right now in college football. Mm -hmm. That's like wide ass open in the NFL. Right. This is open in the NFL. You're the receiver, I'm the yep. DB. I mean, this is open. No, like, open. And you got to throw it. You got to throw a strike. Yep. The coach the next day is not going to want to go like, no, hey, son, the, see his hands? See, he's got a half a step? Right. Zip it in there. That's why we did it. So, yes, again, I don't love that position. The body weight being forward, he's not allowing any of the power to really load up. And the arm is starting to get a little too long for for me. We got one more picture here, all right? And then this is one other thing I see at times, all right? And again, hey, it's a good high release, but one thing I see from him too is this honky quarterback, somebody told me to get on top of the ball, mm -hmm. you know, some guy who knew nothing about throwing. I do see a lot of that too. Whoa, that I yeah. mean, that's not going to do anything. It's doing nothing. It might, you know, it might help you hit this big blue pad right now. But again, compromising power and will compromise accuracy. And yes, you know, I think we could probably widen the base a little bit. There's things he can work on. The guy's got talent, and right. I think he has enough of a natural throwing motion mm -hmm. to make these corrections. Here's another thing I hear. You just talked about it. Oh, I always hear, oh, you can't correct a guy to throw the ball. That, that's bull crap. Of course you can. I mean, we just saw Tom Brady. I've seen Tom Brady change his motion twice in his career. He's arguably the greatest of all time. Right. Aaron Rodgers came into the NFL throwing the mm -hmm. ball up here. The greatest throw I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. So the 
the the point is people who can throw it you right. can tinker with them and change them and to, to your point about both those names Rodgers and Brady one right. thing that they've done and they've changed their motion in different ways throughout their career but one thing they've gone from pretty high yes to the ball closer to their body closer to their body because when it's closer plane. to your body you call more of this more of that turn in right yeah. I mean to be up here how can you really get a how can you be strong right here in this position that's not strength mm -hmm. yeah Brady and Rodgers want to be more like over here right? right again now they're a little behind the ball instead of on top of it to what you're saying mm -hmm. and hey this is I can hit you a whole lot harder with a punch like that than I can like this so that's Whoa. like that's, that's not gonna do it it's fixable mm -hmm. it is it's totally fixable you just got to have some people stay on them incorporate the body learn a few things like that and then tighten that motion and I do think it's very fixable and, and we saw some of this and we're going to get to that in a second and uh, let's see slant route slant route that he threw at the combine yeah I know you want to point it out as an example as good or bad just the bad okay and again I'm not trying to like crap on Jalen Hurts I'm excited for him handsome smart <laughs> handles himself the right way. I see the potential. I know the kid's willing to work. Easy guy to pull for. I, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly right. But, yes, here's a throw, the slant route, right? This is a combine throw. This is not going to be realistic in the NFL. Drop, hey, really improved. I like that. But you go. Let's go to the next picture, Pete. So now we go to the next picture. Okay. Two hands on the ball for a while. Two hands on the ball is something I'm going to hit on in two seconds. But here we are. We haven't even hit our third step. And he's already turned to the target, right? Yep. So he's literally gone one, two, and he's wide open and turned open like this, all right? The receiver hadn't even come out of his route yet. That has not come out of his route. And again, I don't, not that I'm like totally obsessed with that, but mm -hmm. this is just not a position that's going to lend itself to a top-tier type throw. Mm -hmm. Again, if Brady or Rodgers were throwing to their backside, you would see one, two, yeah, they would start to get kind of over there at three, and then they would let it all, as they hit that, that third step it would all come undone like this and bam they're going to throw a strike here he's getting into position way too early and then let's go to the next picture okay here real quick all right but again this is what i don't like see how the shoulders real frozen right he's he's already in position to throw it and he's here so if camera man you know you're the receiver he's here like this already right and he's gearing to throw he's already starting to pull it away so we're not going to get any of this flow from the upper body or creating Creating up opposites from top to bottom and it leads to hey I got a completion at the combine I understand hey we just want to we want to we want to complete it I get mm -hmm. that you're gonna be a little tight so I certainly am um, um, uh, have feelings for the situation he is is in here but it's just a little bit of another example of that bad thing I saw at Oklahoma and Alabama that needs to be fixed because hey he throws a ball here do we have one more picture or not is that the last one you know but again, you can see he's wide open still, right? He never, he never got here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then as he releases and throws this, and again, anybody can go back and watch this on video. The ball's there, good spot, but it's a very controlled, didn't let the ball go, didn't throw with, with any pop at all type of throw to where I want to go that it's not even realistic in the NFL right. that's not going to happen so I saw that with slants out routes things like that now as the workout went on first off he's worked on his drop underneath the center I really like that the other thing he's done really well two hands on the ball two hands on the ball is going to promote some of the things that you and I talk about yep the shoulder you know, turn the shoulder turn right and two hands on the ball and he had great movement with the ball on his drop you know, somebody is telling him the right thing that, hey, re you know, release your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Brady and Rodgers aren't dropping back like, oh, gosh, I'm a robot. I can't move anything. No. Right. They're like, damn, I'm real good and I'm cool. And look at me drop back. It gives them rhythm and flow and doesn't make you a robot. And I saw that more and more as we went through the Hertz workout. And let's get into some of the things I saw that give me hope and I think are going to show a lot of people that the kid has potential. First thing. On the run. He threw it well on the run at Oklahoma and at Alabama. Didn't Very matter. Well. And, and you know, I see this a lot with young quarterbacks because throwing on the run forces you to get in the positions you should get in mm -hmm. when you're dropping back to pass. 
You know, again, we talk about shoulder turn. Anybody out there? I know he's on the run, but upper body wise, I'd like to see him be in this position more when he's going to throw the ball in the pocket. He's got to learn to do that. When you're on the run, whether you're throwing to your, your natural side or your unnatural side, as you know, that be ability to create the opposite, get the shoulder somewhere near the target, mm -hmm. now you don't even have to think about throwing. It's just when you unravel, the ball comes out and you go, damn, I threw that ball pretty and good. Moving to his left, he's forced to, and it gives you an indication that he's comfortable doing it. He's He's, he can His do this. His upper body looks good after yes. he was forced to do that. Yeah. He can do it. And again, this is what I see enough natural in this guy to go. The issues he has, I think if he's got the right people around him and you're in the NFL environment where a coach is watching you every day and watching your feet and watching your upper body, that these are things you can fix. Just like we saw Lamar Jackson make a huge jump from one to two. He did. You have somebody staying on you, you can stay on top of these mechanics. You don't got to worry about going to school anymore, the 20-hour rule. You can just spend all day in the facility <laughs> and have the coaches critique you. So, yes, on the run, he's perfect. He's a great thrower on the run. And I think like, like last week – we talked a lot about Justin Herbert throwing that deep post corner. Yes, right. Because it, it says a lot about how comfortable you are letting it go, sure. throwing the deep ball. And I think we've got some shots of him throwing the deep post corner as well. We do. And, and the thing that I liked about it here with him throwing the deep post corner, which, again, really was some of his better throws of the day. I mean, he threw them on the money and threw them with ease. But I saw a lot of the proper mechanics on this throw. Now, throwing to your open side sometimes forces you. That's to his right. To his right, my left as a quarterback. But you can't just say straight downfield, right? It's going to be very hard for me to just throw the ball over here by keeping myself straight downfield. So a lot of the times with quarterbacks who have problems with that issue of moving the shoulder or doing that, these type of throws force you to do it because mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to get it there unless you do it. Right. You know, sometimes you see the deep balls, the post corners. That's finally when a guy starts to go boom and they hit it and they start doing this and you go oh man he throws he's a great deep ball thrower what's going on with him when he throws the five yard slant route well he doesn't throw it the same way right. that's what happens and I saw this here one, one as you see two hands on the ball mm -hmm. really he's at the top of his drop here really in a good position base is there and he's about to pop up and get to this position which I really like too let's go to the next picture Pete next picture all right now, you know, he's hard to see over here, but you just got to trust me, okay? You got to trust me. He is in a position of like this with two hands on the ball and his shoulder is starting to turn. Right. It's hard to see because especially like with the guys behind him in all black as well. He's kept his weight back pretty well. To what you said and saw in those first pictures, exactly. Here's a guy that in those first few pictures was throwing the slant. It was like here. Here he is now getting ready to throw, and it's back over here. The back foot is underneath his throat throwing shoulder, which is, again, going to allow him to explode and not have to use all arm, but be able to use his legs and his upper body in a cohesive way to make him throw a strike down the field. And I know we got one more picture after this. Let's hit it up. But, you know, again, great release. He's pointing his body in the right direction. Yep, let's clear that. And because of that, he's come out and the ball is yes like on these throws mm -hmm. i never saw this where the ball got real long and the arm angle broke when he made these throws and you can kind of see it here his arm is here because everything else has worked the right way so he didn't have to get to the point of throwing the football and go wait i got to figure out how to get more power here oh let me make my arm longer and i'll try to figure it out that way no, he's in a position where his body was like, you're there. Just let the arm react. And the arm just went boom, boom, and shoom, 45-yard laser down the field. How often do you find yourself liking a guy's mechanics as you're getting to know him better on the tougher, deeper throws versus the, the easier ones underneath? Uh, I, you know what? Uh, more than you would, than you would imagine. Yeah. You, yes. It, for whatever reason, deeper throws, because guys are looking for that way to get more power, and because you're not being hurried by it, right? You're throwing mm -hmm. just spots and areas, right. right? So you're not knowing, oh, gosh, my receiver's about to come out of the break. i got to hurry up and throw you it. Have, you're not rushed and you're not as specific. So now, you, oh, okay, i got to throw it deep. Let me relax. And guys really do it the right way a lot of the times. And then they think, oh, a short throw, it doesn't matter. 
huh. right? And then, oh, I threw a completion, but the, man, the next one's in the ground? Why did mm -hmm. I throw it in the ground? Well, because you're not doing the same damn things. Right. It's very real. It happens all the time, even with younger kids I work, at, work with, I see it. And even with guys who are a little more gifted throwers. I mean, last Definitely. week, Justin Herbert, the, the one real crit uh, critique we had of him at the Combine was, on a shorter throw. Yes, no doubt. He on did the, the same slant. thing. Yeah. He kind of just said, I'm, I'm big, I'm strong, I got big hands, I got a great arm. Mm -hmm. I'll just kind of muscle it in there. Right. Yeah, that's great. But the NFL, Drew Brees, ask him. He's the same thing every throw. Boom. Mm -hmm. Oh, for him. 79% completion percentage. I haven't thrown an incompletion in four years. It's because he's a freaking machine. Right. He's a machine. And you have to be a machine in the NFL. You know, at this level, the quick throws, the diversity of throws, and like we talked about, the coverage is just so much greater. The windows are so much smaller that you've got to be more efficient and consistent with your motion and you're throwing the ball. And this will either be an advantage or disadvantage to him as we wrap up uh, Jalen Hurts. And just like with Justin Herbert, we'll continue to spend time with them as the weeks get closer yeah. to the actual draft but people are going to be watching Kyler they're going to watch Baker and yes. compare him exactly to what he did his last year in that system yeah when they do that uh, and compare with those two guys what do you think they're going to see well I, I I don't think it's I don't think he's on their level of being able to those guys are really gifted natural throwers of the football mm -hmm. I mean they are I've seen Baker Mayfield in person I haven't seen Kyler Murray in person but I don't need to I mean I just can see the ball the way it pops off his hand you know because he's been so good mechanically all these years too it gives them the ability to do it different ways now because they felt how to do it the right way and they go oh I gotta drop my arm well I can still do the the right things mechanically I just gotta drop my arm you know you, you watch Aaron Rodgers throw a sidearm ball he does he still does all the things you like here he just Drops it down and gets down there to do and, it. And both both Kyler and Baker were very good at that. They can do up, anything yeah. with the football. Right. So this guy has some more growing to go there. And I don't know if he'll ever get to Kyler Murray's level of throwing. Kyler Murray's got a chance to be like really, really mm -hmm. special. But he's a leader. He's tough. He he can run as we know. He can throw on the run. He's battle tested in big college football games. And he has shown improvement throwing the football. And everything I've heard, he's got the persona and the attitude to do the right things. And I've already seen corrections made. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And, hey, there's a spot for these guys in the NFL. You know, he's, he's yeah, okay, we'll bring him along as a quarterback and we'll use him as a weapon, you know, early on in his career. And then who knows, maybe two, three years from now, he is a starting quarterback in the NFL. There's a lot to like here about the kid. And I see potential for the kid as a quarterback going forward. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.